Bwana asifiwe. Uh, it's another great opportunity the Lord has given me to come and share his word. I am his messenger carrying his word to his people in his sanctuary. So you're in the right place and there is a share for you. The word of God, it transforms us such that we are able to know that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And I want to believe on this fourth day of the ICC, is it fourth or fifth? Niangapi? I want to believe that you have been coming every day and you have been wearing that attire, restoration in progress. It is coming in bits and pieces. I hope you are putting it on because there is a work of grace that is ongoing in your life. Amen. I'm also included. One of the things I've been asking the Lord is that whichever message you ever give me an opportunity to share, it should first of all bless me. And I'm so glad because the word of God is going to bless us this evening. If you want to give uh, a title to my sharing this evening, it is empty from empty to full hands. Yani you are empty, you need a restoration and the Lord has done it. Now you are having your hands full. I like going, whenever we go to the presence of the Lord, he has got that good habit. I'm reminded of the story of Hannah. How she went carrying the, the sorrow of the heart. The Bible says she poured her heart to the Lord. By the time she left the altar, the Lord had poured and had put in her hands the gift of her son. I pray that this evening the Lord will ensure that you leave this sanctuary with something towards on your way to restoration. And this evening, I want us to talk about two people. They are a duo. They are a power team. You can't speak about one without the other. One, one story is not complete without the other one. They complement one another. And I want you to open up your heart because I know there is a word for you. And this is the story of Ruth and Naomi. Ruth was empty, not by choice. Naomi was empty, but she had contributed. And maybe as we continue, you'll get from where I'm coming from. And I know this evening, I know each one of us, we are here because we are still pursuing our restoration. And I know we are singing that showers of blessing. We have received, but we still want some more. That is why. And I love the song we sang that we still need more. The well of Jacob is not enough. It's only the Lord who can satisfy our hearts. Therefore, I know I'm talking about people who maybe are feeling they are wasted years, broken dreams, wrecked, wrecked relationships, whatever you are lost, you know it better. But the good thing is the Lord has promised to restore. I said I want us to talk about two DOIs, two daughters of impact. It, one is not complete without the other one. And I would want to give a, a small background maybe about Ruth. And we, we can read from Genesis chapter 19 and verse 30. That's where we read. If you read the whole of Genesis chapter 19, you'll get to know the background of the Moabites. We all know that Ruth was a Moabite. And I would want to refresh your memory who was a Moabite. And, but because of time, maybe you'll just read from verse 30. Lot, this is the story. We are coming from a story where the angels visited Lot and they wanted to rescue Lot and his family from the calamity because the Lord was not happy with what was not happening. And now this is after the Lord, the angels have rescued Lot and his family. And now this is where... Uh, we get our story, our reference this evening. Rot and his two daughters left Zoar. When they left Sodom and Gomorrah, they first of all had a stopover at Zoar. But now after the, the fire, now they are leaving Zoar, and that's where I want us to get the background of Ruth. Lot and his two daughters left Zoar and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zoar. He and his two daughters lived 
in a cave. Next verse. Verse 31. One day, the older daughter said to the younger, our father is old and there is no man around here to give us children as is the custom all over the earth. Let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through, through our father. That night, they got their father to drink wine and the older daughter went in and slept with him. He was not aware of it. The next day, the, old, the older daughter said, said to the younger, Last night, I slept with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and sleep with him as we, as we can, so we can preserve our family line through our father. Next verse. So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went in and slept with him, went and slept with him. Again, through the sana. Uh, so they got their father to drink wine that night or so, and the younger daughter went in and slept with him. Again, he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Moab. That's where I wanted you to get. I wanted you to know the origin of Moab. He is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him Benamin. He is the father of the Ammonites of today. I wanted you to see Ruth was a Moabite. When we come to the book of Ruth, we, she's introduced as a Moabite. And Moabites... Were a pro, was a product, is a nation, is a tribe which was a product of incest. It was um, an initiative of immorality of Lord's oldest daughter. No wonder they didn't have a great reputation. It was negative power of a team right there. Two daughters, negative power of a team. Two daughters who decided to trick their father so that they can have children. I want you to understand that Ruth is coming from such a background. A background of incest. Nothing to be proud about. Can you imagine when you are told? And I started by saying Ruth was a Moabite, not by choice. She just was born and found herself a Moabite. She had not contributed to being a Moabite. Negative power of two. Moabites were a product of incest. It was a bad start. And sadly, things didn't get any better over time. Many years later, the Israelites were camped on the plains of Moab across Jordan River from Jericho, poised to enter the promised land. Fearing they would be overrun by the Israelites, Barak, king of Moab, you remember our, our speaker on Monday talked about Barak. Barak was king of Moab, one of the many kings of Moab. Uh, um, Barak, king of Moab, hired Baram to curse Israel. We know that this backfired because Baram could not curse those whom God had blessed. Are we together up to there? So when this approach did not work, I want you to know it didn't end there. When Baram could not cast the Israelites, he came up with another idea. Baram counseled Barak how to harm Israel in a different way by having the Moabite women seduce the Israelite men. Numbers 31 verse 16. They were the ones who followed, we are talking about Moabites, they are the ones who followed Baram's advice and enticed the Israelites to be unfaithful to the Lord in the poor incident so that a plague struck the Lord's people. 
Now that is the background of Ruth. That even when Baram was unable to curse, he came up with another idea. The women who, and remember, we said Ruth is a Moabite. So she's among the women of Moab. I don't know that, whether that's how they got to get married to these sons of Erimerek. We don't know. But we know Baram seduced, encouraged the women of Moab to seduce the, the Israelite men. On the other hand, I would want you to project for us Ruth chapter 1. We are going to read verse 1 to 5. Now I want to introduce our second lady. Her name is Naomi. Ruth chapter 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Erimerek, his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Mahron and Kirion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now, Erimerek, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They, were mar they, they married Moabite women, one named Ofa and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Mahron and Kirion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. Why I said that one of them had contributed, we, had, we have just read that Naomi and her husband, they, just, they decided. They knew they belonged to Judah, Bethlehem. And God didn't want anything to do with Moab. But they just decided, after all, there is a famine. We might as well go and look for food. So that's why I said, Naomi, when she went to Moab, she lost her husband, she, he, she lost her two sons, but she had contributed. And like Naomi, who had done nothing, she just found herself. Maybe, but that one is just an imagination. I don't know whether she, they, she also enticed or seduced one of the sons of Erimerek. But for Naomi, they decided as a family, or rather maybe with a husband, to move on. And I want to pause there and say, we have been living in such uncertain times. Could you be listening to me? And because of the circumstances that are prevailing around you, you have decided to take some shortcuts so that you may survive. In other words, you think if you cut corners, you are helping God. This couple decided, they knew, actually where we read earlier, we are told there was such a big plague which came about because the men from Israel decided to intermarry with the ladies from Moab. God wanted nothing. The Israelites to have nothing with the Moabites. And maybe you are listening to me and you are wondering, in the circumstance I am in right now, and I want you to look inside yourself, in the circumstance you are in right now, and in the circumstance you are asking God to restore you, could it be you have contributed? You just decided to disobey, to rebel. You even know where you are, you should not be. You know what you are doing, you should not be doing. But you have just decided to be rebellious. I, however, have got good news for you. Whether you did it knowingly or unknowingly, there is restoration for you in the house of God. Maybe you are empty tonight because you just decided to be part of it. But today, there is a turnaround because of the amazing grace of God. And that's why I started by saying how I pray that each one of us can put on the restoration mentality. That you are ready to be restored. But it's not just willing to be restored. You must be willing to comply. You must be willing to allow God, allow his words to shape you, to help you come out from that loss, maybe which you have contributed or maybe you have not. I'm aware when we encounter loss, it's, it's easy to get discouraged, 
to settle where we are and not to expect anything better. But the good news is that our God is a God of restoration. And therefore this evening, because our God is so merciful, whether it was your fault, somebody else's fault, or just life in general, he says he's not only going to bring you out, he will bring you out and make you better. Because his idea of restoring you is to increase you, improve you, promote you, and make you better. Did you hear what I said? That God wants to improve you. God wants to increase you. God wants to rescue you from wherever you are and restore you. And the question is, are you willing? In other words, I said you have to maintain the restoration mentality. Where we have just read in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, I, started, I said that Naomi, maybe they had a family meeting with her husband and two sons, and they decided that we are relocating. Maybe that one was, according to them, was their America. You know, people like green cards, and they want to relocate to that other better land. Maybe, I don't know, according to them, it was definitely, it looked better than, than Judah, where they were. So they decided as a family, we are relocating. Yet Naomi, because of where she was coming from, she knew that God had said no. And because of ignoring what God's instructions, we know, we have read, she lost her husband, she lost her two sons, and everything that she had. But, but, Naomi made one wise decision, which I would want to encourage everyone listening to me to make. She made one wise decision. She decided to go back home. Tonight you can decide to go back. Many a times you even know where you lost it. If you are asked, you know where you missed it. Naomi, in spite of her big loss, she decided, I am going back home. She decided to return to Judah. This is what I call taking responsibility. Tonight, you have come because you want to be restored. Are you willing to take responsibility? Somebody said, for you to be facing north, your back must be facing south. If you are facing south, then your back is facing north. And I want to tell you today, when as she was facing going back to Judah, I am telling you her back was facing Moab. Was facing Moab. She had decided to return back. She knew where she lost it. Do you know where you lost it? Are you willing to take responsibility to allow God to restore you? And it looks like this is a principle that goes across in the word of God. We all know, or majority of us know about the prodigal son. Restoration never took place until the day the Bible says that she, he came back to his senses and he said, I am going back home. When he decided to go back home, it was like he was saying, restoration loading. Restoration loaded. And not just restoration, there was celebration. There was manifestation. There was demonstration. We are talking about restoration and demonstration. If you make the first decision of going back where you lost it, to make things right, I can assure you, God will keep his bargain. Restoration will road. There will be celebration. There will be demonstration. And you will become an envy of many to the glory of God. The prodigal son decided to go back home. Remember I said you can't talk about Ruth and not talk about Naomi. Neither can you talk about Naomi without mentioning Ruth. I want to believe for the 10 years they were in Moab. And maybe from history Ruth had known about her background. Maybe she got the idea 
finally I can belong to another tribe that is acceptable. You know, Moabs, Moabites, they were regarded as enemies of God. On the other side, Israelites were the favorite of God. And I want to believe this is the reason why Ruth decided I got an opportunity I am not being left behind. She looped herself on her mother-in-law. And let me tell you, when she did this, when she looped herself in her widowed mother-in-law, two widows who are walking back home, just because of blessing of association, or is it blessing of relationship? Though weak, because actually according to Naomi, even when she got back to Bethlehem, and women were receiving her, she told them I have come back empty. And Ruth is standing here and she's wondering, empty and I'm here? According to Naomi, she was still empty. After all, I've lost my husband. I have lost my two sons. The other one has been left here and this one has refused to go back. Here I am, empty. But you know what? When Ruth says this opportunity, restoration started loading. It loaded. You want to know it loaded? Project for us. Ruth chapter 4, 14 and 15. Ruth ended up being the best that Naomi has ever had. Now they have already gone back. And uh, Boaz has married Ruth. In chapter 4, which is the last chapter of the book of Ruth. The women said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. This is after Ruth got the baby. Verse 15. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Naomi had lost two sons. According to the testimony of the women, they were saying, it, the, now Ruth was better than seven sons. Which is better? Two or five? You don't need to calculate. It is five. And even the women could see. That is what happens when you take responsibility. Ruth took responsibility and said, I have seen an opportunity and this one is not, I am not letting it go. Actually, she was so determined until the mother, take us to Ruth chapter 1 verse 12 and 13. Ruth 1, 12 to 13. This is where Naomi is pleading with her two daughters-in-law to go back. And actually at some point she was very sarcastic. She was telling them, you people, why are you following me? Even if I got a husband tonight, tonight, and you know it's not possible, and get sons. Are you going to wait for them until they are old and they come and marry you? That was not very kind to somebody who is also mourning. Remember they had also lost their husbands. But I'm telling you, when you are hurt, you can easily hurt the others. I can tell you this was not very kind of Naomi to tell her daughters-in-law. And this is what it says. She's still pleading. Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me. Even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons. Would you wait until they grow up, they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's heart has turned against me. Naomi was so bitter. But let me tell you, I started by saying they became a power team. And I guess at this time is where the Bible says two are better than one. And I guess Naomi looked at the mother at this juncture she was the stronger one. She decided, 
it's okay. Vent everything. I'm not responding, but I'll tell you when I will respond. Verse 16 and 18 of chapter 1. After this statement, Ruth decided I can't take it longer. And this is what the Bible says. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if ever death separates you and me. She was so specific until yeah, she had her stand. Can you project for us the next verse after that one? When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Did you know that declaring your stand, it depends how you declare it. You can proclaim it in such a way, even the devil will not try again. Actually, the, even when the devil when he was testing Jesus, the Bible says he had to depart. The speaker was it yesterday, he told us, don't create room for negotiations with the devil. Persistence erodes resistance. He reminded us that the devil has been in this game for all this time. You won't win. You had better shut the door. Are you wherever you are because you allowed yourself to negotiate with the devil? I want you for a minute to imagine if also Ruth decided to go back like her, her sister-in-law. We would not be talking of the story we are talking about. But because of her determination, she was able to, to enjoy with her destiny helper. From this point on, the mother-in-law joined her camp and stopped asking her to go back. Confession blocks the enemy. This is part of the responsibility which you'll have to take if you want restoration and demonstration. Create no room for negotiations with the enemies of your destiny. Broke it completely. Actually, in the book of Matthew chapter 21, I think 20, 20 or up to 23, it talks about Maybe you can project it for us. Matthew 21, 20 to 23. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly? They asked. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not, now, do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also... You can say to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. When you are negotiating, when you are talking about your destiny, it is not just about praying about the mountain. It is talking to the mountain. There is time to talk to the mountain and tell it, no, this one we are not negotiating. You have to give in. I loved yesterday's preacher. He told us a time... You have to be seizing many opportunities and tell the devil, in this one, you are not a party to it. This one, we are not negotiating. Jesus paid it all. Very quickly, I want to talk about a few things that cost Ruth we started by seeing that she, she had no history to carry. She had nothing. Maybe she wished nobody would introduce her as a Moabite. No wonder Naomi was not in, introducing her. Could it be a lesson? She didn't want her to be known she has come back home with a Moabite. But we know, we have read in chapter 4, that she became an envy. She was more than like seven sons. How, did, how was she able to maneuver this? 
but maybe let's just read this one to, see, to make the connection. Then I'll talk about the, the few things which we may need to do for us to remain in the restoration mode. Ruth chapter 4 verse 13 to 17. Ruth 4, 13. Ruth chapter 4. Is that chapter 4? No. Okay. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The woman said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. I needed you to get that one. And verse 16 says, Then Naomi took the child in her hands. I want you to note, not Ruth. It's Naomi. Then Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son. And they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. From Moab, through such a big loss, because I want you to remember, Naomi, Ruth, was just a young wife. When uh, Naomi moved to Moab, the sons were not married. Maybe she was in her 20s. A young, excited young girl, looking forward to raising a family and maybe having sons of her own, and then all of a sudden, then, Karameti strikes, she has no husband, and she has no son. It was devastating. It was such a big loss. But where we have read, she is celebrating. And I want to talk about the few things that we can do for us. Moving from empty, whether we have contributed to our hearts being empty or our hearts. You know, we might be looking at you and it looks like your hearts are empty. And maybe your heart is so empty. Your heart is so dry. We can actually write the word dry. Only that I don't know which pen we can use. Number one, I want to talk about a few things that Ruth did. Remember I said Naomi connected herself to another lease of life through deciding to go back to where she knew she would find God. But for Ruth, she did a few things. And I can recommend you, because they are from the word of God, you do them, you will be on your way. Restoration loading. Number one, her attitude gave her focus. Her attitude. Your attitude will give you focus. She knew what she wanted and where she wanted to go. Remember, if you can see it, you can get it. And I want to ask you, do you know what you want? Could it be through Erimelech's family, she had known Moabites were enemies of God. But through marriage, she had gotten an opportunity to belong to a blessed nation. Through salvation, you and me, we became sons of God. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are sons of God. The right attitude will give you focus and you'll be on your restoration board. So, Ruth's attitude towards life, that's why she knew when to allow her mother-in-law to talk. But she knew to where to mark her boundaries. And that's why we read, a time came and she said, don't even waste your time. Don't tell me. Actually, I had better die. I'm going nowhere. And the Bible says, when Naomi heard that, she never mentioned that again. 
until the end of the book, Naomi ne never mentioned that. Her attitude. She knew what she wanted. In this life, if you want restoration, you have to say, this is it, and be ready to pay the price. Pay, take responsibility. Number two, she declared it. It was not believing in the heart. It's not a matter of working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You talk about it. Not just in the heart. She declared it. She declared her stud in a good way, in a polite way. But she made her stud black and white. This is me. We are going. Because actually, where you will sleep, I will sleep. Where you are going, I'm Remember, she had never been to Judah. She didn't know whether it's east or west. All she knew, she was with a person who knows the way. So where you go, I'll go. Where you die, I will die. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And she was so specific. Can you declare it? Do you know what you want? Because if you believe it, you declare it, you can have it. The Bible says that your expectations will not be cut off. So, declare that which you are believing God to restore back to you. Number three, something that Ruth did. At no time, she never allowed the roots of bitterness to take place in her spirit. At some point, we realized her mother-in-law was so bitter. Actually, she talked about it. She told the women, God has been so bad. Actually, she was so bitter until she was telling the women, don't call me Naomi. The Na Bible says Naomi means present. Call me Mara, which means bitterness. But for Ruth, we have not had anywhere she was complaining. She, she knew what she wanted. She talked about it. No bitterness. Even when her mother-in-law is so sarcastic. Even when her mother-in-law is ignoring her. And saying, I've come back empty. And the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. It's like she was just watching that one. She knew the battles to fight and which were not to. Don't allow the loots of bitterness in your spirit. Maybe the loss you are going through right now during this season, there is always somebody to blame. Don't worry. This game started from the um, Garden of Eden. But I want to encourage you tonight. If you are listening to me, do not allow the root of bitterness. Because the root of bitterness will derail you, derail you, divert you, and stagnate you. Number four, Ruth was so courageous. Remember, she's from Moab. She is a woman. She is a widow. They have arrived. The mother is staying in the house. And she takes responsibility to go and look for food for herself and her mother. She knows nobody. She has no husband. And she, she's a Moabite. She has no man to defend her. And she's going to ask for food for Barry from strangers. She was very courageous. She knew what she wanted. And no wonder the favor of God went ahead of her. You have to be courageous. You have to be ready to fight and pursue that which you are believing God for. You are, must be willing to pay the price. She had the courage to start afresh. She was willing to take a risk. She did not care what people thought about her as a foreigner. I, mean, I don't know whether, I am imagining maybe she was speaking a different language. She didn't care. Whether she used sign language, but at some point they were communicating. So I think maybe there was another Swahili, which was they could both use, both maybe the Moabites and the Israelites. All we know is that she was a courageous girl. Remember, she's very young. She had just gotten married. She was a courageous woman. Number five, she was a caring girl. In her lowest, she was willing to care for someone else, her mother-in-law. Not because of what the mother-in-law had, but just because she had a kind hand. Even as you navigate the season we are in, where nobody, majority don't seem to have enough, make room 
for kindness. Make room to care for others. She cared for her mother-in-law. And I want to believe she kept, as she continued to be so kind to her mother, she kept on winning her heart. And no wonder, as we are finishing the book of Ruth chapter 4, it is the mother-in-law who is cuddling the baby. She has now 100% won the heart of her mother-in-law. Ruth had a teachable spirit. She listened to the counsel of her mother-in-law. And of course, throughout, she maintained a humble attitude. She never felt jealous that the women were celebrating. You would think the baby belonged to Naomi. But we never read anywhere that Ruth felt intimidated. Actually, they don't talk about her. She knew she had achieved from a foreigner. She had already become, she now belonged to the lineage. From an outcast to not being just accepted, but be becoming an accepted, loved member of a society. But she had become of the lineage of the Messiah himself. Because of her humility, even when at first when she went to look for food in Boaz's farm before she got married, there is a place where she, uh, Boaz was telling her, I have heard how you have been so kind to your mother-in-law. She was caring until even the people who she was fearing, they were admiring her. As you pursue your restoration, there are some attributes which you will need for you to get where you want. It was such a turnaround. Ruth moved from having no family to having a loving husband and a son. From being destitute to being well provided for. Remember she got married to Boaz. She became the owner of where she used to go and borrow and ask for food. She, and from being an outcast to being not just accepted in the society, but being part of the lineage of the Messiah. What a turnaround. What an amazing restoration. Celebration. The ladies celebrated. And I want to declare this evening, this will be your story. What has been recorded in the Bible, it is for our learning. Because as long as we obey, then restoration is roading in your life, along your path tonight. This will be your story. Because our God is a God of restoration. Our God never fails. fails. He will never fail. He will restore in his time, in his way, and for his glory. So I want to ask you, how empty are you feeling tonight? Do you believe that God can fill you one more time? He filled Naomi. She became a very proud mother-in-law. Ruth became a very proud mother. Yeah. They came in empty-handed. Now, their hearts are full. And that can be your portion. So, do you believe that God can fill you one more time? Therefore, we can confess that. I want to invite Joy, even as I invite all of us to stand up. As we make this declaration, I'll just say, and then if you believe it, you will say amen. I loved the young, the young people here. They told us, it is, let it be so. So as you say amen, you'll be saying, that is me. I am a remnant. If you believe it, you can say amen. I am a remnant. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I do not know how, but God knows. I cannot, but God, you can. I know there are many things you don't know how, but I want you to hold it there because God knows how. Because he can never fail. 
And I want us to sing together this song that says, My God never fails. Let it be prophetic. You are speaking to your future. You are speaking to your circumstance. And you are telling the, your circumstance, the God I believe in, he never fails. Yes. If you don't know the song, I want to believe they projected. If you don't know it, just read the songs and allow the Lord to minister to you through the words.
your hands, lift your hands and say, with, with my soul, with my soul. we know you have heard our prayer. Are you there? You are listening to me and you have not given your life to Jesus. The best restoration is to find yourself in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me and you would want to give your life to Jesus? If you lift up your hand tonight, we are going to pray together. Are you there? Lift it so high, it all starts at the cross. Are you there? Are you there? And maybe you are listening to me in your house and you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. We can pray together because our God will not fail you. Father, in Jesus' name, for that one who is 
making up his mind or her mind to receive you. I pray the Lord you forgive their sins. Write their names in the Lamb's book of life and cause them, dear Father, to start on the pathway of restoration. We honor you, we bless you. We receive your word because your word is eternal. Thank you for hearing us and blessing us tonight. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.